Hello and welcome back to Rage Gaming in a new Elden Ring tier list video for patch 1.09, technically 1.01. Something important in this list has changed there. 1.09 though made a lot of changes, buffed a lot of weapon types, nerfed quite a few, and really nerfed bleed in particular for Arcane. That is relevant because a lot of their top tier weapons were bleed related. They nerfed the White Mask and the Lord of Blood's Exaltation Talisman to no longer give you as much AR when a bleed proc does occur. This nerfs all bleed builds and does hit arcane relevantly. So we have some new things to talk about and a rearrange of power of our weapons in this tier list. But this is the tier list S, A, B and C. If it makes it to this list, I think it's good. But compared to one another, of course, not everything is S tier. So we begin at the bottom where Clinging Bone does finally make it onto the list. This is a fist weapon and it's quite an interesting one because we have the buffs to fist weapons overall in 1.08, but a PVP nerf to them in 1.09 where the running heavy attack and heavy attack have lower poise and that does suck. Also they buff the actual ash itself, lifesteal fist, and that comes out a bit faster and is also connecting a bit better. This is the longest fist weapon in the game which is really important because fist weapons have a really big issue with their range which wasn't buffed in any way. Now the downside of this weapon has always been the low AR and the awkward ash of war which is forced onto it which is usually impossible to land in PvP which is funny because it's an ash of war that has only relevance in PvP or certain very few tarnished NPC enemies in PvE. You can land this ash now compared to before if the enemy makes a pretty big mistake. The lock-on is technically better this patch, but it's still so hard to hit. And honestly, there's going to be so many times where you really should have hit it and it just doesn't go through and instead it does this pathetic chip of damage. When it does land, which is rare, it will actually deal a good amount of damage over 1k and steal a pretty sizable amount of health. So it is awesome when it lands, it's just basically never going to land. You will often do something that should land with this ash and it just won't work and that is always frustrating. It still needs more love. As a fist weapon though, it's okay and you don't have big damage or burst, say without bleed, with this weapon in particular. So it finds itself in a bit of an awkward place. It needs a bit more love but it's actually usable now which is a big step and that's why it's finally here on the list. Next in C is still the Serpent Bow, which a lot of you guys had some comments about in the last time. Basically, it is a very useful bow for what it does. So basically, you use poison arrows with this and they will apply deadly poison. And the bow itself will also apply poison or deadly poison, which is an effective way to apply it very quickly. Deadly poison is more damage per tick than regular poison, but lasts less time. This actually works well with the AR buffers that proc when you proc, say, poison and rot. There's talismans and other items for this. And you'll end up procking more of that and applying the damage faster over time with deadly poison which is actually a good thing but it's still like an arcane weapon which means it helps apply status of any kind faster than say other bows so it's actually really 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 effective at applying sleep literally one arrow and you've got a sleep right there and these weren't even the highest sleep build up arrows i could have been using so that is very impressive and certainly useful just popping this on quickly if you're running another say arcane build to be able to just pop this bow on and then just sleeping an enemy which is really useful in certain boss fights like the Godskin duos. Or in any boss fight really, just quickly applying some deadly poison, getting good damage out of that and going back to your normal fighting style. So it is a relevant weapon and still there, and that's why it's still in C, but it needs some sort of big buff to get any higher on this list. Finally for C is still the Ripple Crescent Halberd, which in 1.09 this weapon type has actually been buffed and nerfed. So they've got faster running attacks and recovery, but they've decreased the hitbox size for various attacks. So they're losing that slight phantom range this weapon type had, which certainly sucks in PvP, but the running attacks being quicker is quite nice, as well as the recovery being better to combo into other attacks faster. This is still the highest natural AR arcane weapon that we can buff up in various ways, leading to effective status buildup with this weapon like sleep. We can commit to arcane then with this and maximize how fast we apply stats is using this weapon, which can be great in both sides of the game. It's a bit of a niche build though, but if you want a way to apply stats of all kinds very quickly, this is a great melee weapon for exactly that. Moving up to B tier, <laughs> I'm laughing to say it, the Bloody Hellas, which has been nerfed again in 1.09. After something like four nerfs to this weapon type over various patches, hitting its poise, its power, the jumping attacks in particular, it has taken another nerf. Now heavy thrusting swords have also lost a bit of range after the hitbox size of various attacks has been reduced. Despite that, it's still just a solid weapon, but it just keeps taking hit after hit, both mechanically, but also its output of course being a bleed weapon. The major one nerfing this though was a specific PvP nerf where they nerfed counterattack damage. That was a big basis 
of how you would get damage off with this weapon, often trading and winning because of that, and it just does less damage, as well as the AR buffs to White Mask and Talisman being worse, it's taking nasty damage hits. I still rate it as a solid weapon though, even if they want to nerf it every patch apparently. Place your bets in the comments, how will they nerf Bloody Hellis in patch 1.010? Because, you know, it's definitely getting nerfed, just how? Also in B tier then is the Regalia of Eocade, with its Eocade Dancing Blade Ash of War, which makes it very strong. It was actually buffed in 1.09 as a straight sword. It has faster running attack speed, recovery, and the first attack of its combo is quicker too, which is quite nice. But all that affects the weapon in a way that doesn't really matter. Its main damage is still the Ash of War, which remains a weaker version of another weapon on this list as always. Still, it's a reasonable strength weapon, just a bit overshadowed obviously, and it is feeling mechanically better this patch as a straight sword. So if you do like it, it's better than it was and it's certainly viable. It's a good weapon just overshadow. Above that is the A tier then. Let's start with Eleonora's Paw Blade with its Blood Blade Dance Sash of War. Now back in 1.07 that Ash had a minor improvement on its damage detection making it something more powerful up melee close improving its bleed and damage potential which was good. The issue with the Ash is still that it forces you to leap forward do a long combo then leap back. You don't really have the control that you really should have and so that can be very awkward especially in PvP when you try to use it and they just avoid it and then you're stuck in this combo committing your stamina and FP to nothing or cancelling it and feeling like well that just didn't work. They need to make a kind of relevant mistake for it to actually land and it can be awkward that movement even then in PvE against the training dummy because you're jumping around for no reason. In 1.08 they increased the speed of some attacks and reduced the recovery time to twin blades when two-handing which in a way was a specific buff to this weapon because you would want to two-hand this anyway to get the maximum use of its unique heavy attack and combos. In 1.09 they also improved the twin blades further improving their running attacks and recovery time Time, which again feels smooth and feels good. Right now it's just feeling like a lot mechanically better especially in two hand. The running attacks coming out quick is great you're really able to trade and catch people with that. The standing combos are always going to be deadly if you can ever get the full heavy spin combo off that's great. And the ash of war the burst potential with bleed and the curse blood and all the raw damage it's good it's just awkward still. It's interesting seeing these consistent twin blade buffs every patch though and it is very relevant the weapon is feeling smoother than ever so if you're ever a fan of this concept twin blade or this weapon, it is in its best state, so something to consider. Not in its best state by comparison as Rivers of Blood, still in A tier because of its potential output, but you know, they have buffed and nerfed this one in various ways. It used to be crazy, it was majorly nerfed in patch 1.06, dealing less damage and less bleed on the ash, as well as needing to actually be physically up close to get real damage out of it. In 1.09, technically this has been buffed again. With the running attack speed increased, the better recovery time on katanas as a whole, that is nice for this weapon. But ultimately, it all comes back to the Ash of War Corpse Piler, which is just not hitting nearly as hard anymore. Further, that's nerfed again because it is a bleed weapon. You're looking for the bleed procs. And as we know, the White Mask and the Talisman, they're nerfed this patch. So it takes a big relevant hit in that way. In PvE, you can still get great use of this weapon. But I just find that it works best in combination with another weapon now. Power Stance or something like that. And then pulling out the Corpse Piler when relevant. Moving on, a weapon I bring down to A from S is Mogwin's Sacred Spear after the back of various nerfs and again all this bleed nerfing that's going on. 1.07 actually reduced the range of its Ash of War, the Blood Boon Ritual, but the damage was unchanged at that time. So the bleed buildup speed is still very good if you're able to get that off and that can be great in the arena or otherwise. But it was another weapon type to take a hit as the Great Spear also has reduced hitbox size on various attacks, addressing its sort of phantom range you'd experience in PvP. Again, the bleed procs as quick as they are with this weapon deal less damage and of course you know give you less AR when they happen but it's still a powerful weapon type combined with the cursed blood damage when buffed up meaning fire and extra bleed build up when it is it's still very strong it's just noticeably weaker this patch with everything going on so S tier just feels maybe not relevant anymore not a fair ranking still like the weapon though and I do think it's strong just noticeably weaker in this patch but now that brings us to the S tier where I'm quite excited to talk about this weapon Morgoth's Cursed Blade. Back in 1.04, the Ash of War was massively buffed to be much faster and have better recovery time. And that knock-on effect is relevant now in 1.09, where the Ash of War Cursed Blood Slash has increased projectile generation speed and reduced recovery time again. So not only do you recover really quick, meaning you can combo off the back of it really well or roll out of it, but it's actually catching people on the melee hit because it's quicker that, and now the pop, the Cursed Blood, because that's way quicker 
2. In fact, this buff was so strong that in patch 1.09.1, they decreased the poise damage of that because it was too damn good in PvP when it would stagger people and combo so well. They kind of gave it a true combo where if you do a running light or a standing light, then the Ash of War, then a light, then the Ash of War, then a light, then the Ash of War, due to the incredible recovery it has now, you've got an infinite combo there. Really, really dangerous because of how quick it comes out and all the bleed potential and the range of it. That works incredible in both PvE and PvP, and now this weapon is genuinely really good. Also, it's a curved greatsword, which was buffed in 1.09. They have better attack speed, range, and recovery, which just makes this feel incredible. It has gone from a pretty good weapon to a genuinely dangerous one, and if you haven't tried it out on this patch, you absolutely should. It's really good. Still in S tier, despite the bleed nerfs, then is Reduvia, which has no changes to its mechanics as a dagger in 1.09. It's still incredible despite the bleed AR nerfs. You see, successive hits are still king and haven't been touched in this patch, and so most of the damage comes from that with this weapon when your power stands comboing someone in PvP or PvE when you're going for the max DPS. After the buff to daggers, where they improved the speed, the range, and general attacking of power stancing with these things, they've just been absolutely king, and Reduvia is basically the best dagger in the game. It's Ash of War, it's basically Blood Blade, but doesn't cost health, so it's just ridiculously good. And that has damage detection on the dagger, so if you use it at point blank, it's like a shotgun of bleed and just raw damage. So even if you're not getting as much AR from bleed procs anymore, this thing still builds bleed super quick to get loads of damage out the procs, has loads of successive hit power behind it, so obviously really high burst there in DPS, and just feels and looks great, and is really versatile with its semi-ranged Ash of War. But finally, we come to the last weapon in S tier, the Marais Executioner Sword, which is insane and still insane due to the 1.04 buffs of travel distance to the Ash of War and the roll cancel, meaning you can fade out of it or just get out of it when you miss it. Ultimately, it was always a really high DPS successive damage attack. And after 1.04, where they really improved the mechanics of that Ash of War, it's been insane. They actually improved it with better recovery in 1.07 and with some two-hand greatsword buffs at that. But greatswords also were buffed in 1.09 again. They now have better speed, range, and recovery on various attacks, making the weapon's basic moveset feel much smoother. Again, though, the true main chunk of damage is always going to be the Ash. It's just nice to have the strength of the basic weapon mechanics feeling even better. The raw DPS potential of this weapon cannot be understated. It is absolutely insane. It is a boss chunking machine and can be very deadly in PvP if you can land that, say, Ash in trade or catch someone out. But the basics of this weapon are better, so it's more relevant in PvP to this day because of this change. So it's in a really good place and obviously still S tier. But there you have it. That is our complete list of what I believe are the best arcane main arcane weapons. If there's anything I've left out maybe relevant in this patch, then let me know in the comments or maybe you'll place things slightly differently. I do hope this list has helped you, though, if you're considering arcane in 1.09. And we can all look forward to 1.010 when, yeah, again, they probably nerf bloody Hellas. Until then, I've been Hollow, you've been you, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos. Dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes. Bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement to take our insanity and turn it into entertainment. Yes, I said entertainment twice. To reiterate that it is nice. To look into your faces on a mostly daily basis when you let us in your homes to make the whole world a stage is uh goodbye <laughs>